In 1917, when America entered the First World War, the United States Army tasked Brigadier General John T. Thompson, chief of the small arms section of its Ordnance Department, with designing a short-range, rapid-firing, large-capacity infantry trench weapon. The general turned the job over to his own firearms firm, the Auto Ordnance Corporation, AOC. Thompson and his team determined the .45-inch automatic Colt pistol cartridge used in the Colt M1911 semi-automatic pistol provided the most suitable rounds for the automatic weapon they envisioned. Due to the ammunition slated for the new weapon, the term submachine gun came into general use, referring to the gun's sub-rifle caliber cartridge and its capability for fully automatic fire. AOC manufactured the first working model, the Annihilator I, in 1919. It bore many hallmarks of later Thompson guns, a slab-sided receiver, rear and forward pistol grips, modified Colt M1911 box magazine and top-mounting cocking handle. Its rate of fire was 1,500 rounds per minute RPM, and could only be fired in full automatic mode, but did not have cooling fins fitted, vital on a gun capable of such a rate. A modified version, the Annihilator II, and its variants, officially known as the M1919, soon appeared sporting the innovative Blish locking system, or sliding breached block, a selector switch for full or semi-automatic fire, a blade foresight, finned barrels, removable front grip and a receiver machined with slots to insert a newly designed 20-round boxed magazine, as well as a 15-100-round drum. Altering the angle of the Blish lock reduced the rate of fire to 800 revolutions per minute, but the piece comprised only 11 major moving parts. Christened by its inventors the Thompson gun and colloquially referred to as Tommy Guns General Thompson contracted with the Colt Patent Firearms Company to produce 15,000, at cost of $38.25 per gun. The first Colt Thompsons came off the manufacturing line in March 1921, each designated as Model 1921A. The weapon weighed 10 pounds, 4 ounces, and as with all the Thompson models, its effective maximum range was 50 meters. Through the early 1920s, General Thompson tried to sell his invention to European nations, but he had better success in the U.S. In 1926, AOC received orders for Thompson guns for both the United States Post Office and the Marine Corps. The Marines guarded the mail trains, which needed armed protection due to a string of violent armed robberies that swept the country in the 1920s. Later, AOC delivered 1,500 Thompsons to the Navy. Additional sales in the commercial market were made to landowners such as Western ranchers, law enforcement agencies, and of course, organized crime syndicates. A widespread lack of infantry weaponry for all armed forces in World War II prompted the U.S. Army to contract with the new owner of AOC, Russell McQuire, for 20,405 Thompson guns, now designated the M1921A1. By early 1942, half a million Thompsons had been manufactured. By this time, the Tommy gun became the most famous submachine gun of the war. AOC was quick to see the importance of the nickname and quickly patented it. The majority of those deployed were the more soldier-proof Model 1928A1, and starting in that year, the famous Model M1A1. These were made more cheaply and robust than the 1928A, and had fewer parts. The former could fire 725 revolutions per minute, while the latter model shot at a rate of 600 revolutions per minute. As the only submachine gun in its inventory, the Tommy gun was used by the early in World War II. 
It was perfect for close quarter fighting and usually fired from the hip. In the jungles of the South Pacific, U.S. Marines used the gun in conjunction with the Browning automatic rifle, BAR, to good effect. The former's tracer rounds acted as a passable target marker for a squad's bar man. British commandos and US GIs in Europe both liked the Tommy gun for its rugged dependability and knockdown firepower, and it was certainly in the fighting across Europe that the Thompson excelled. It worked best in a temperate climate and proved its worth many times over in the house to house combat of Italy and northwestern Europe. Soldiers quickly developed effective fire tactics to use their M1A1S to maximum effect. For example, soldiers armed with the semi automatic M1 Garin rifle were often placed on point, with Thompson armed men behind, more M1S following, and an M1 carbine in the rear. This combination provided a comprehensive fire pattern, with long range shooting suited for the Garin close work by the Thompson, and intermediate range fire by the .30 caliber bar.